Please welcome Stephen Berkowitz. Yeah. I did my junior year abroad in England, and uh, while I was there, I also did the backpack around Europe thing. Uh, now, I wasn't actually a deadhead in college, but you couldn't tell that by looking at me, and with my long hair and earrings, torn jeans, and American passport, I was clearly a threat to public safety, and I got hassled at pretty much every border that I crossed. The first time, it, it wasn't even at a border. I was, I was sitting on a park bench in Venice eating a sandwich when these two cops came up to me, uh, checked my papers, and then in a very thick Italian accent, which you're just going to have to imagine, said, you have drugs, marijuana? And I said, no, no, of course not, which was true, and they must have believed me because they went on their way and let me get back to my Nutella and peanut butter. After that, I, I traveled around for a bit, and I ended up spending the last week of my grand tour in Amsterdam. Now, I, I didn't want it to be my last week, it's just that the night I got there, I came down with bronchitis, and I spent the next seven days sweating out a fever on a paper-thin mattress in a youth hostel. No hash bars, no red light district, no nothing. And um, when my fever finally broke, the only place I wanted to be was back home safe in my stupid little dorm room in the UK. So I, I canceled the rest of my plans and I, I took off for England. The thing is, those plans had me returning to England from France and not the Netherlands. And so I already had a, a ferry ticket for the crossing from Calais to Dover. And to get there, I was going to have to take a train from Amsterdam into Belgium, another one from Belgium into France, where I'd catch a third train that would take me to my boat. Now, between that bench in Venice and my sick bed in Amsterdam, I crossed, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 borders. And like I said, I got hassled hassle coming and going, turning out my pockets, turning out my bag, while my fellow travelers were basically ignored by the border cops. So I was not entirely surprised to be greeted on the train platform in France by a pair of customs officers, uh, one in a uniform, the other in a suit. Now, when these same two guys had checked my papers on the train, they gave them back with a smile and a thank you, and they went on their way, and I thought we were done. I was silly. Um, this time, they, they took my stuff and started walking away and said, come with us, and I thought, oh, right first stop in France, we'll just go do this in more comfortable surroundings, and I went chasing after my passport. So we're in the custom shed now, uh, uniform's behind me, he's got my entire backpack dumped out, he's picking through my dirty undies, whatever the hell else I got going on in there, and, and Suit is, is perched on the edge of his desk, looking down his long Gallic nose at me and asking me questions. I said, do you smoke? And I say, no. He says, then why do you have this lighter? And I think, don't lay bombs and hash bars. But I just point to my sleeping bag and I say, to store campfires. But he's not having it. He uh, keeps at me for 20, 30 minutes until late in the interview, he's flipping through my deck of cards. And I think he's bored or fidgety until two cards stick together. And he goes back and separates them. And I finally realize that he's been checking for blotter acid which I also don't have, and, and this simple little motion, it causes me to lose my mind, and I start screaming in my head, what the <laughs> wrong with you people? I haven't done anything wrong, I've just been sick and I'm trying to get home, you fraud bastards, in my head. <laughs> but in my exhaustion, I pick the exact wrong moment to snap, because his very next question is, have you ever done drugs? And instead of the wise, no, no, of course not. Or perhaps a bold, I'm not sure I see the relevance of that question, officer. I went with stupid and I said, yeah, and you? Yeah, and that's when he told me to step into the back. And, and at this point, I got shit scared because I realized that nobody on the planet had any idea where I was. I had not spoken to anybody I knew in over a month. Do you remember when that was possible? I mean, <laughs> first word did not announce that Stephen had just asked Francois as mayor of the custom shed. I, I didn't know if this guy was going to beat me, plant drugs on me, or stick his fingers up my ass. I just knew that I had pissed him off. I was all alone and at his mercy. But 
Fortunately, nobody beat, planted, or stuck anything in anything. They just, just had me strip naked and shift my bits around. But uh, finding nothing, or at any rate, no drugs, they, they cut me loose. Which is when the story gets weird. But when I was in Italy, I had bought my dad a, a pipe, a, a tobacco pipe, and I had it gift wrapped. And when I got back to my dorm, the box was still in my backpack, and the wrapping paper was completely intact. It was untouched, which was just bizarre to me, because, I mean, they dumped my backpack, they dumped my day pack, they unrolled my sleeping bag, they went through every card in the deck, and then they stripped me naked. I mean, they really wanted to find something, and there could have been anything in this box, you know, hash or shrooms or maybe Schroeder's cat, I don't know. I just <laughs> knew that I couldn't part with it, and so I, I bought my dad another pipe, and I held on to the original, still wrapped, for years as a reminder of the day I learned not just the price of stupidity, yeah, but that there are some borders even a customs agent won't cross. Thank you. Yeah.